In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God my joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Beloved in the Lord, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our, Son, of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which He strengthens our faith by giving us His body to eat and His blood to drink. Therefore, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do, for this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God. And to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should do this also in remembrance of him showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all one partaker of this one bread and drink from the one cup. Just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, <clears throat> merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may be continually manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's house, a lamb for a household. And if a household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any, eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of our Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. 
That is why many of you who are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. For when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing to you, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. You have all, at various times and places, taken medication. You probably have, like me, a medicine cabinet full of medicine and vitamins and supplements and everything else. Maybe not as much as some, maybe more, who knows. But when you have to take medicine, you have to go and talk to somebody about what's wrong. You have to sit down with a doctor, maybe a nurse, and tell them and maybe even show them what's going wrong, what has happened. This is not going away. This is causing me problems. I just can't live with what's happening to me. And so, a prescription is written. I grew up as a PK, pharmacist kid. My dad, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were all pharmacists. Stop and shop at Schaff Drugs. Every morning at 6.30 a.m. is what my dad would say on his radio announcement. My dad used to bring home a book that was literally this thick, and it was all of the prescriptions that the FDA had approved. And every four months or so, he would get this packet in the mail of prescriptions, and he had to take out certain pages and put in new pages. Do you know how many prescriptions there are today that are approved by the FDA? There are 20,000 plus prescriptions. 20,000 plus prescriptions. That's how much we rely on medicine. Tonight, as we enter into what's called the Triduum, the three days, this is actually the beginning of a three-day service. Maundy Thursday, Good Friday continues with it, Holy Saturday, and then the Easter Vigil. And tonight we have the wondrous account of Jesus with his disciples in the upper room. It's almost like we are sitting on the outside of the upper room, looking in through a window and listening to what's going on. But you'll notice that in John's account here tonight, he doesn't talk about the institution of the Lord's Supper. The other gospel writers talk about how Jesus takes gives bread, gives wine, says, take, eat, take, drink, this is my body and my blood. John talks about washing the disciples' feet. Why? Because that shows us who Jesus is. Jesus, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, stoops down to this world and not just walking amongst us and talking amongst us, he gets down into the dirt with humanity. And he washes the grimy feet of his disciples. That's a wonderful, wonderful gesture of love. It's a wonderful proclamation for the world of what Christianity is all about. That God has not only become one of us in the flesh, but as you know so well, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And he doesn't just say these things, he puts it into concrete action. I won't wash your feet, and you probably don't want to wash my feet. I don't want to love my neighbor as myself, and neither do you. Even on the good days, I don't want to. And the same is with you and with me. But within Christianity, Jesus Christ comes down to earth and everything that he does, he does for you. Everything on this night in which he was betrayed, sitting down with his disciples, sitting down with Judas, who would fulfill Psalm 41, which says, My friend, even my own dear friend, whom I have shared my bread with, even he has raised his himself, his heel against me. He goes through that for you. He knows he's going to be betrayed. He goes through that for you. He knows he's going to be put on trial. He goes with that for through that 
all for you. The nails, the crown of thorns, the pierced side, all for you. Blood, draining, death, being cried out by Jesus for you to heal you. Why? Because you're sick, and so am I. That's the thing about sin. We like to think about sin of just something I said or I thought about or I've done. The little checklists that we can think of in our mind of these things or the things that we keep a checklist of what others have done around us. But sin is so much within us, it is like a disease. It is a disease. It is an incurable disease left to ourselves. And in anything, if you know anything about a disease, it begins to consume the person's body to the point where they can't control it, which is why you go to the doctor. Sin has corrupted you, has corrupted me. It has caused us to do all sorts of things, to cause all sorts of damage to ourselves, to our loved ones, to cause all sorts of damage even in our relationship to God. And yet this is why Jesus has come. He is the great physician of body and soul. He says it's not the healthy that need a physician, but those who are sick. That would be you. That would be me. And he comes with the word of grace, as we just heard a few moments ago. I forgive you all of your sins, and by that proclamation of the gospel, you are healed. You are healed completely and wholly. You are com healed from everything that you have done against each other and everything that you've done in your doubts and your unfaithfulness against God. But Jesus goes even one more step further as he institutes the sacrament of the altar. I love being a part of a sacramental church. A sacramental church says, yes, the Word of God is powerful, effective, living, and active. It cuts through everything. It brings about the Holy Spirit. But God also takes that same Word and He attaches it to external things. Water, bread, and wine. This is concrete action, not just simple lip service. This is God getting into the dirt and the grime of your life and my life, and not just washing your feet, but washing your entire body and soul and making you clean. And it is also Him setting up this table before you in the presence of your enemies. St. Ignatius said this about the sacrament of the altar, breaking one bread, that is the medicine of immortality, and the antidote against dying that offers life for all in Christ. That's what he says. Before you here tonight is the medicine of immortality. Before you tonight is the antidote to death. And just like any other medicine, we can't fully comprehend this. One of the physicians in this church or even somebody like my dad or my brother who's a nuclear pharmacist, don't ask me about that. They can tell you how the medicine works. They can tell you how it's metabolized and how long it lasts and everything else. But when you go home and open up that medicine cabinet and you pop open that bottle, you pop it in your mouth and you take it by faith. You take it by faith and trusting that this is for my own good. This is for my benefit. This is going to hopefully take care of the problem. And that is how we come before the Lord's table here as a sacramental church. Not trying to rationalize, well, how can this be his body or his blood? How can this just be bread and wine? Or how can it not be bread and wine anymore with all of the debates that have happened throughout the world? We just simply take faith and trust in what Jesus says Take, eat, take, drink. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for 
you. This is not some sort of little sentiment. This is not some little metaphor. This is the enfleshed God, Jesus Christ, true God and true, God, true man, deadly serious about deadly sins and deadly serious about giving you this gift, his body and his blood. In this sacrament, the Lord Jesus Christ brings you into participation, a communion, a one union, a common union with one another, with his body and his blood. In just a few short days, we are going to profess that Christ is risen from the dead, and anybody who rises from the dead has a heart that is beating, is breathing oxygen, is alive again. And that same body and blood that was crucified and that was risen from the dead is now here in this bread and wine, in, with, and under, by the power and command of God's Word. And just like any medication that you take, this now becomes one with you. His body becomes one with your body. His blood flows now in your veins. And not only that, you are now able to love because He first loves you. He pours His love into you here tonight freely, transforming our dying bodies into His immortal body. Or as Paul likes to say it, we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. Here is the medicine of immortality. Cyril of Jerusalem says it this way, Do not therefore regard the bread and wine as simply that, for they are, according to the Master's declaration, the body and blood of Christ. Even though the senses suggest to you the other, let faith make you firm. Do not judge in this matter by taste, but be fully assured by faith, not doubting that you have been deemed worthy of the body and blood of Christ. You are deemed worthy by His blood shed for you. You are deemed worthy by His cross, His passion, His resurrection for you. You are deemed worthy to now come and to receive the medicine of immortality, to kneel before angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, before the living Son of God, the creator of all the universe, the creator of you and me, who has his eyes squared solely on you this evening, and who says to you, Friend, come up higher. Come to the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Come, taste the medicine of immortality. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. To Christ alone be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We rise and confess our faith. I believe in one God, <laughs> Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have built your church according to the humble image of your Son. Direct our faith to his self-offering on the cross. Draw us by his redemption and after his example to resist the allure of worldly power and pursuing of our own sacrifices or of our own satisfactions. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your righteousness, deliver our souls, which are precious in your sight, from death. Embolden our hearts to pray, confident that Christ prays with us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as the institution of your New Testament is celebrated this day among all people, make your saving power known throughout the earth. Grant those who boast in the sacrificial gift, sacrificial gift of Christ would share with him, share him in the world that he came to bless. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give healing to the sick according to your will. Grant relief to the suffering by your grace. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying. Bring all those who are, heal, who are in need of healing the medicine of immortality fulfilled in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our evil way and live. We come before you, although we have sinned and deserved only your wrath, yet we flee to your mercy in Christ Jesus our Lord, who gave his body and his blood for our redemption. Lord, grant that we may ever thus believe and never waver. Grant that in such faith we may worthily come to your altar to eat the very body and drink the very blood which your Son has given for our redemption. In thanksgiving, we remember and proclaim the sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we place our trust. Until his return, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
The holy body and most precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in his peace and his joy, you are free. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.